all right STEM students, I have some information you need to know. So in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you every free online resource I used as a math student and some of which I still use today as a working professional. I'm also going to be making a part two of this video where I talk about free online coding resources. So if you're interested in that, stick around. I make a lot of math related videos and talk about what it's like to work in a STEM field. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe and get notified every time I upload a video. All right, let's just get right into it. So section one, I'm going to call online tools. What I mean by that is they're not learning resources, they're just things that will make your life easier as a math student. So first and foremost, the MVP, we all know her and love her, Wolfram Alpha. It will actually work through problems. So for example, I would say I used it most for differentiation and integration. Not only does this give you the final answer, it gives you the first steps in working out, which is great if you need a nudge to get started. There is a paid version, but honestly, I never felt the need to upgrade. Everything that I ever needed as a student was on the free version. Another similar website is Symbol Lab, and again, this will give you a worked solution to a problem. I've put in a few random examples just to give you an idea of what it can do. Something that I really like about this one is at the end of a work solution, it will guess what you want to do next and suggest some next steps. For example, if you've worked out eigenvalues, it will guess you might need to know the eigenvectors and help you with that too. Next up, we have Desmos, which will plot your equations on a 2D plane. This is great for visualising problems, for seeing what your equations look like plotted out and it lets you layer them on top of each other. It lets you put in variables that you can adjust with a slider. Just for fun, here's another cool equation. Look at this graph. Tell me this isn't the most satisfying thing you've ever seen. Next up, we have a phase plane plotter and this really helped me in dynamics modules. It does exactly what it says on the tin. I use this tool just to get an idea of how they work. Like I would just try a lot of different equations in there and see how they turned up on the phase plane, like adjusting things and see how that changed the phase portraits. Obviously at university, you don't get any credit for just having the right answer. You have to do the whole worked solution. So sorry, you're still gonna have to do all the working out that comes with it, but this is a good way to check that you have the right answer. Next up, we have YouTube resources. So I've split this into two categories. We have your tutorial channels. So that's like work solutions, how to do specific skills. Next, I'm gonna put up a list of channels where you can find lectures on YouTube. So that's more university level stuff. As a student, I found these especially helpful for revision because sometimes you just need to hear a concept explained in a couple of different ways before it clicks for you. And these online lectures are a great place to find alternative explanations than whatever your lecturer told you. I personally watched the entire Caltech machine learning tutorial series on YouTube to like fill in gaps and give me a wider context for the stuff I was learning. YouTube's not the only place you can find online courses. There are also websites like Coursera, Udemy, Skillshare. Typically these websites have free courses as well as paid ones, or they'll have a free trial. And they have not only hard skill courses, so for example, an actual maths class on like algebra or whatever, but they also have like how to give a good presentation and how to structure an essay, which are also important and often overlooked skills for STEM students. Don't be that person who can solve an equation really well or something, but is incapable of communicating it. Um, you need to be able to present, you need to be able to structure your proofs, structure your essays. Next, we have essay writing resources. So if you're a STEM student and you're still using Word to write your essays, this is your sign to switch to LaTeX. I cannot emphasize the urgency of this enough. It's gonna change your life. It's so much better suited to writing STEM essays and it's so much easier to reference. If you are new to using LaTeX, there is a free online compiler called Overleaf. Alternatively, you can install software that will compile it on your laptop or device. Personally, I recommend installing the software. I'll have my preferred one on the screen, only because in my third year of university, Overleaf went down. Once you're using LaTeX, you're gonna wanna reference using something called BibTeX, which just makes the process very easy. And uh, the best place to find these online is 
this website. You basically search your author or your paper and it will have a little get bib tech reference and it will just give you it already in the latex format. Then all you have to do is copy and paste that into your bib tech file. Make sure you have this command at the top of your latex document. Fair warning, I wrote this master's thesis in 2020, so some of the other packages might be out of date. Uh, also make sure you have the bibliography command at the end of your document with the name of your bib tech document inside that so that it knows where to pull the references from. And then when you reference in your text, LaTeX will automatically generate you a references page at the end and pop in your references already in the right format throughout your work. Next up, we have academic material that is floating around on the internet. So if you've recently started university, you might be surprised to know that you can find lecture notes, work solutions, past papers from other universities as well as your own online. Um, if you're doing GCSEs or A-levels, there are so many past papers available. I will have on the screen a couple of names of websites you can go to find those. Also, if you're a university student, you have access to your library online, so you should have PDF versions of a lot of your textbooks available for free online through your university library. Also, something I struggled with as a student is that we never had very many past papers. Um, our lecturers were only obliged to give us one worked past paper. So in case you don't know, um, your university has got an archive of past papers and you can go find all of them. The only thing is they might not have worked solutions with them, although sometimes the solutions are in there as well, so it's worth checking. Um, but even if there aren't worked solutions, you can work on the problem yourself and take it to your lecturer and they should be willing to help you with it, like I can't imagine why they wouldn't. So that's all the free online resources I used as a math student. If I missed any that you use, feel free to comment those down below. Hope it was helpful. Don't forget to stick around if you're interested in the free online coding resources. Like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone!